Welcome, John. Thanks for taking the time to catch up. Let's get right into it. We have both been focused on innovations in the telecoms for many, many years. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that around the world, our industry looks to T-Mobile as an inspiration for innovation. We certainly have. What disruptions do you see coming next with the most potential to really disrupt the industry and how? Well, Raghav, thanks for having me. Um, I think the next wave of disruption in telecom will be driven by AI. It's the convergence of AI, automation, and advanced connectivity with 5G advance and 6G. I think AI will disrupt all aspects of telecom. As an example, AI for telecom means using AI to increase the network efficiencies in telecom networks. AI with telecom is like you know using AI inferencing at the telco edge for enterprise use cases. And then AI in telecom is going to redefine how radio networks and telecom networks will be architected. And to the last point, this is why you see T-Mobile and Nokia focusing heavily on new RAN concepts like AI RAN. Every G that we ever built for wireless, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, are single-purpose network. 6G, I think, will be powered by some form of a multi-purpose network powered by AI RAN, where you can use the same network to support telco workloads and AI workloads as well. I think, finally, I think the other disruption that we're seeing uh, that's going to happen is the rise of satellite direct-to-device technology. I think it's, it's going to change uh, the coverage paradigm. Uh, you know, the, our vision is that T-Mobile customers anywhere in the world will never see a date zone uh, as long as they can see the sky. And to date, T-Mobile and SpaceX have launched more than 400 satellites, and you know, we're just beginning to do some beta testing. Excellent. Thank you, John. I, I couldn't agree with you more. AI is going to have a very disruptive impact. And I think it's, you know, we all need to need, need to figure out actually, actually how to use them, you know, in the network in itself, uh, without a doubt. And even terrestrial, you know, networks to make sure that we give connection to the unconnected Absolutely. In, in emergency situations. Yeah. Thank you for that. You know, you and I talk a lot about automation. How important is it to T-Mobile and some of the frameworks that you've developed. Can you comment on where you are placing the highest priorities in your journey to autonomous networks? What benefits have you already realized so far? And what do you expect to see going forward? As we continue to grow our customer base and grow our network, automation you know, is not an option. It is something that you and I have to do to support this network and we're heavily invested in automation and some, some of the highest priority would include things like end-to-end -end network orchestration and self-healing capabilities, uh, making sure that our network doesn't require human intervention to bring it back if there was a fault, right? The, the other uh, aspect of automation is our programmable network, right? We, we are going big time and starting to sell network slicing in the market, right? You need network automation to figure out how to basically provision a slice and then take tear down the slice when a customer is done with it. Uh, we need automation in, in the way we do testing. Uh, when, we get, when I get a software load from you, so automated testing and for CI, CD processes is an absolute must so that we can roll out, test the, the software from you and then roll it out in, 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 uh, in, in, the, in the shortest time possible. And last but not least, to support our enterprise growth, we need automation in how we monitor enterprise accounts, right, to detect anomalies before customers perceive it, right. So, automation is huge for us, and and one of the things I'm I'm I'm, I'm very excited about is being able to work with Nokia to to bring some of all these automation capabilities to life, and and we're seeing some good benefits with automation, I and mean, we're already starting to do that in things like uh, zero touch uh, provisioning, sure. uh, in how we, we turn on uh, some new MVN also the, as an example. We're using automation to improve customer experience as well. Um, using Nokia's uh, self-organizing network capability with AI, uh, we're able to actually uh, provide uh, coverage for customers who just suddenly lose cell sites. For instance, in Florida, when Hurricane Milton hit, um, 
when the hurricane made landfall, we lost 22% of our cell sites. But yet, using AI with self-organizing network with automation, we're able to only impact 8% of the customers. So, so that is basically a true use case of being able to bring automation with a self-organizing network to the table. So moving ahead, we're going to do even more uh, with Nokia. Mm -hmm. Zero touch uh, provisioning is important uh, as well and be able to support our customers better with automation, uh, using automate, automation to roll out new, new features and capabilities in less time and also be able to detect anomalies if anything goes wrong. Yeah, I guess this whole notion of being digital and driving customer experience and, and obviously the network's becoming more complex. I mean, there is just, you know, the use of automation and AI that you talked about earlier are just two very important ingredients, you know, to driving this. Absolutely, and, it's, it's going to be coming table yeah, stakes. Right. When, when you have so many different quality of service, especially with slicing, you need to right. bring in a sense of automation uh, into your network. Yeah. I know we're working with this in, in these areas with you and you know, we're really excited about you know, what we're doing here with you. So thank you for that. You know, there's another area, uh, John, that is uh, very interesting and intriguing and is developing fast, which is in the area of the, how the developer community is developing. And T-Mobile has been actually very active in it. Now there is a little bit more standardization going on in terms of the APIs and the ecosystems that are coming together. Where do you see new opportunities for monetization when it comes to API exposure? Absolutely. Uh, I think Raghav T-Mobile has been a strong advocate for opening up our network safely and, and the API economy. I, I can think of at least off my head three, three good examples. Right? One is to ent for enterprise and developer enablement. Right? Um, if we're able to open up a network and, and expose network capabilities in a form of APIs that developers are able to use, they're able to incorporate some of these capabilities into their products and services. You know, be, like network slicing is a good example for, for enterprises to, to be able to consume network slicing. Um, a second example is in security and identity services, oh. right? As digital interactions increase and, and you know, fraud prevention APIs are going to become very valuable, right? To basically allow uh, companies to, to secure the enterprises for fintech companies to be able to offer services that basically allows us to, to identify and verify identities using APIs. And last but not least is a 5G powered IoT ecosystems, yeah. right? APIs can unlock basically new opportunities for developers of IoT products. You can think about basically APIs for fleet trackings uh, in healthcare using APIs by healthcare providers uh, for ultra low latency performance for remote monitoring of patients uh, that's not in the hospital. Yeah, no, um, you know, we, we, see, we have a very similar vision in terms of how we are working with you, you know, on yeah. that particular area. And I guess the whole notion where you have to now participate in this broader ecosystem to A, deliver value and be part of the ecosystem to be able to be part of the value chain. And that seems to be kind of the journey that you're talking about here. Absolutely. We, you know, we, as we continue to expand on the capabilities of the network, we want to be able to offer our customers more than just a phone plan and a SIM card. Sure. And, and to do this, we have to open up our network, expose our network capabilities through APIs. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, John, one of the areas where you're really pushing the boundaries, uh, you know, and you're always pushing boundaries, which is, uh, you know, really great for us to be working with you. You talked about AI, but, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the evolution of the edge and the importance of this, you know, how this edge will evolve and how the adoption will be in, you know, in the, in the broader industries? I, I think the combination of edge computing with AI powered by a very powerful 5G network is potentially a game changer for a lot of critical use cases. I can think of at least three examples. One is in low latency applications. Edge computing is going to bring the processing right up to the edge of the devices. Whether you're trying to do AI inferencing at the edge for real-time feedback sure. and real-time performance for endpoints like robots, for smart cities, for autonomous cars, even for like, you know, the advent of smart glasses for AR and VR. 
I, I think this is where edge computing with AI inferencing is going to be a, be a killer combination. Um, the other opportunity is for enterprises, right? Many industries require high performance computing right at the edge where their factory shop floors are and where the robots are. And we can provide a telco edge. Nobody's going to be closer to our enterprise customers than a T-Mobile telco edge, right? And last but not least is the whole AI-driven network optimization at the edge, right? We can transform the way networks are going to be defined using concepts like the AI RAN. At the same time, we can also use the network at the edge to support our customers with AI inferencing uh, by, by basically monetizing our networks differently and also supporting them by allowing them to do AI, run AI, their AI workloads right at the edge without having to go to the big clouds, which could be more expensive and not as fast in terms of, you know, fast response time. Yeah, no, I think one of the other areas that uh, this helps really in solving is that the enterprises want to maintain the data at the edge. Absolutely. And keep it sovereign. And, yeah. you know, you also solve that problem with it. Not yeah. only bringing the applications, providing all the capabilities, but keeping their data sovereign at the edge. For privacy reasons, for security, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, here's a very personal question. Um, how do you see Nokia stacking up in the competitive landscape in areas like software, like core, orchestration, APIs, yeah. the enterprise space? You know, thoughts on the partnership between our companies? Well, we have a very strong collaboration on the 5G core and our cloud native networks, uh, thanks to the collaboration with your, your, yourself and your engineers. Um, you know, you have a big chunk of our core network. In fact, you are our largest vendor for, for our core network. Uh, with that comes added responsibility and expectations on Nokia. And I really look forward to continue to work with your engineers and the team to take our core network to, to, the, to, to the next level. And obviously, network automation uh, is, is key for, for all the reasons that we just talked about. Right? Um, we are leveraging your self-optimizing network. Um, we need to work with you to develop even more automation in a way you test your software. Uh, the way we deploy our software to do it faster, uh, and and for the way we we look for anomalies on the network, all with automation, right? The other area that I think you and I have talked a lot about is in private 5G network, right? I think there's a lot of things that we can do to tap into your strength in selling our private networks. I think between the two of us, we can also look at designing private networks differently, sure. uh, using a local UPF breakout to build virtual private networks for enterprises that still want to basically have control over the data, but don't want to have to go through the hassle of managing a network themselves. And that's where a local breakout would help. Um, so lots of opportunities that I think that we, we, we need to work on. And because Nokia is such an important um, partner to us, especially on the core network, uh, we look forward to continuing to work with you and to challenge you to step up more and to help innovate with us uh, to make to continue to make our network the best performing network uh, in the world. Yeah. Well, thank you, John, for that. I, I think we see it as a, a, a big responsibility to respond to T-Mobile. Uh, you're clearly leading on the innovation side, and, and this is what is exciting for us. Uh, and uh, you know, as much as we are bringing thought leadership, we're also learning in this process you know, with you and together I think we cherish the relationship and the challenge that you put on us. We enjoy that, that pushes us and, and you can be sure that we'll continue to do that. So I really wanna thank you, John, uh, for a great discussion. There were some great insights and thoughts. Uh, we Nokia really uh, you know, value our partnership with T-Mobile and we really are excited and we look forward to the journey ahead. So thank you very much, John. Thank you, Raghav, and we appreciate your partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.